Hello everyone, today we shall be discussing regarding the breast cancer. When there is an abnormal growth of cells within the body, it is called as cancer. Now, if this abnormal growth of the cells is present in the breast, it is called as the breast cancer. Now, let us see the definition of cancer. Cancer is the abnormal, uncontrollable and continuous replication of cells. When there is an uncontrollable replication of cells, which is an abnormal growth within any part of the body, it is called as cancer. Now herein, the cancer is basically rising in the breast and hence the term breast cancer. Breast cancer is one of the leading most cancers occurring in the women worldwide. The definition, breast cancer is an uncontrolled growth of breast cells. When the breast cells are beyond control or they are growing, then it is called as a breast cancer. The term breast cancer refers to abnormal growth that has developed from cells in the breast. When there is an abnormal growth developed from cells in the breast. The kind of breast cancer depends on which cells in the breast turn into cancer. Whether it's a ductal carcinoma or lobular carcinoma depends on the region that the abnormality of the cancer cells is present. Now there are two types of the cancer. Malignant can spread and benign does not spread. When the cancer is malignant, it spreads and when the cancer is benign, it does not spread. Now based on the presence of the cancer being malignant or benign, the treatment is selected accordingly and the patient's health prognosis it also depends on whether the cancer is benign or malignant. The causative factors. So what are the causative factors for the breast cancer? In the present scenario, breast cancer has to be seeing a strong linkage with the genetic history of the patient. That is, if the grandmother had the breast cancer, the mother has developed breast cancer, the chances for the developing of the breast cancer in the daughter are very high. The exact cause of breast cancer is not known. Though these are the risk factors, but the exact cause is not known. Many of the important risk factors are beyond your control such as age, family history and medical history. Now, when considering of the risk factors, they can be modifiable and non-modifiable. Modifiable is something that you can change and take control of. Non-modifiable is something you cannot change or take control of. The non-modifiable risk factors that the person cannot change are number one being the age, the family history and the past history of the patient. Now, the patient's age and the family history are proving to be a more role in the non-modifiable risk factors. The other risk factors that can be listed in general are age, personal history, that the personal history consists of the person's health history or any of the surgical history that is being done for the patient. Along with that, the patient's use of any of the drugs. Family history, that is the patient's having the family history of the breast cancer in anyone in, within the family. Gene changes and others. If the patient is having the changing of the gene or any other changes within the cells. Use of oral contraceptives. When the woman is being used to the oral usage, having the usage of oral contraceptives at a younger age, the chances for developing breast cancer are considerably a slight higher. Overweight. The women who are said to be obese are having higher chances for developing breast cancer compared to the women who are not obese a little higher. Menopause. The women who have reached the age of menopause are said to be at a higher risk for developing the breast cancer if the other risk factors are also present which includes of the genetic history, the family history, the use of the contraceptives or a past history of the breast cancer. Lack of physical activity. It is said that a walking for at least 30 minutes every day reduces the chances for developing breast cancer in the female. So if there is a presence of the lack of physical activity in the females along with the other risk factors whether it is a modifiable one or the non-modifiable one considering the age and the medical history being a very important ones the chances for developing breast cancer in those women are high. Drinking alcohol. Drinking alcohol is also showing linkage to developing the breast cancer along with the other risk factors. Now the types of the breast cancer that can be are invasive. Invasive the word means invade, to go into somewhere. The word non-invasive means they are not going in where, somewhere, non-invading. So the two types of breast cancer are invasive and non-invasive. Invasive are the cancerous malignant spreads to the other organs that is the metastasis. When there is a cancerous growth that is spreading to the other organs, it is called as the invasive breast cancer. In the non-invasive, precancerous still in its original position, 
eventually develops into breast cancer when the cancer is in the original position and it has not moved from that place it is called as a non invasive now depending upon whether the cancer is an invasive or non invasive the treatment is selected and also the chances of the patient's symptoms differ now the patients who are having the chances for the invasive cancer and metastasis has occurred to the other body parts the complications and side effects for the same are noted down and the complications are treated accordingly the types of breast cancer the furthermore can be ductal carcinoma inflammatory breast cancer and the lobular carcinoma now the ductal and the lobular carcinoma further divides into the invasive ductal carcinoma and the invasive lobular carcinoma now if it is a non invasive it is called as a ductal carcinoma in situ dcis and if it is a lobular carcinoma in situ it is called as lcis now if the ductal carcinoma is staying in the same place and it is not invading the other parts it is called as the ductal carcinoma in situ whereas if it is the chances of invading the other parts it is called as a invasive similarly for the lobular carcinoma if it is staying in one place it is called as a lobular carcinoma in situ and if it is follows spreading to the other parts it's called as the invasive lobular carcinoma now other than the ductal and the lobular there is another one present that is called as the inflammatory breast cancer now let us see them ductal carcinoma the name itself suggests the ductal that is the ducts so within the breast with the cancer that is occurring within the ducts is called as the ductal carcinoma it develops in the inner lining of milk ducts and accounts for 79% of cases it can metastasize to the other parts of the body when the cancer is moving from its original place to the other parts of the body and it is metastasizing it is called it is fairly at a higher risk for developing troubles within the patient's body so ductal carcinoma is occurring within the inner lining of the milk ducts and the chances for those are the 79% of the cases of the breast cancer are the ductal carcinoma now the lobular carcinoma it develops the lobules that is a milk producing glands and accounts for 10% of the cases it can also metastasize when it is happening in the lobules that is the milk producing glands it is called as a lobular carcinoma and out of all the breast cancers that are occurring the lobular carcinoma has 10% of the cases now as the lobular carcinoma metastasizes and so does the ductal carcinoma the treatment as early diagnosis happen should be started ductal carcinoma in situ non invasive contained within the milk ducts and may become invasive now the in situ the word implies that it is in its original place it is not invading to the other parts now there are chances that may become invasive if this is left untreated and ignored upon there are chances that it may become invasive invasive ductal carcinoma the name itself suggests that it is having invasion in other parts most common breast cancer the invasive ductal carcinoma is the most common breast cancer starts from lining of ducts and invades into breast tissues then spreads to lymph nodes and ultimately other organs when it is lining the starting in the lining of the ducts and it is invading into the breast tissues and spreading to the lymph nodes and ultimately the other organs it is called as the invasive ductal carcinoma lobular carcinoma in c2 so it is non invasive contained in the lobules when the carcinoma is contained within the lobules it is called as lobular carcinoma in c2 and it does not spread to the tissues of the breast it is not invading the other tissues but it is remaining in its original place may become malignant if this is non invasive but if it is left untreated and ignored upon there are chances that it may become invasive invasive lobular carcinoma forms in the lobules and grows through the walls of lobules and ultimately spreads the invasive lobular carcinoma has a chances for spread into the other parts of the body and causing the different complications for the patient the inflammatory the inflammatory breast cancer this type accounts for 1% of the all cases now all of the breast cancers occurring the chances for an inflammatory that is an inflammatory process breast cancer is 1% of all the breast cancers inflammatory carcinoma is the most aggressive and difficult to treat because it spreads so quickly now as compared to the rest of the cancers that is the ductal and the lobular whether it is an invasive non invasive the inflammatory breast cancer spreads more quickly and it is more difficult to treat 
Paget's disease. This type represents about 1% of breast cancer. It starts in the milk ducts of the nipple and can spread to the areola, the darker around area upon the nipple. Now, when if it is starting in the areola and the nipple region, it is termed as about the 1% of the breast cancer and named as the Paget's disease. The medullary mucinous and the tubular carcinomas. These th are three slow growing types of breast cancer. Together, they represent about the 10% of all breast cancers. Now, the medullary, mucinary and the tubular carcinomas account for the 10% of all the breast cancers. Now, the stages of breast cancer. Now, when the patient is being treated, the stage of the cancer is first assessed upon. Based on the stage and the site of the tumor and the size of the tumor, it is first identified the type of the treatment that the patient needs to undergo. So, the staging is a very important process in identification for the treatment of the patient. When the patient has stage 0, carcinoma is in situ. Cancer cells remain inside the breast duct without invasion into normal adjacent breast tissue. When the carcinoma is in its place, they are not spreading to the other regions. It is said that the carcinoma in situ is there and it is stated as stage 0. In stage 0, the cancer cells are in its original place and they are not spreading. Stage 1, cancer is 2 cm or less and is confined to the breast Cancer cells have not spread beyond the breast. When the cancer cells are within the breast but are greater than 2 cm or if it is less than 2 cm, it is said to be stage 1. Stage 2. The tumor is larger than 2 but no larger than 5 cm and has not spread to the axillary lymph nodes. When the tumor is greater than 2 cm but it is not greater than 5 cm and has not spread to the axillary lymph nodes, it is said to be a stage 2 cancer. The stage 3, locally advanced cancer. It is divided further into stage 3A, 3B and 3C. The three st third stage of the cancer is divided into 3A, 3B and the 3C. Specifically, the 3B is the tumor may be any size and spread to the chest wall and or the skin of the breast and may have spread to the axillary lymph nodes that are clumped together or sticking to the structures or the cancer may be spread to the lymph nodes near the breastbone. Inflammatory breast cancer is at least stage 3B. Now in the stage 3B, the cancer tumor can be any, spray, any size but it has spread to the chest wall or the skin of the breast or to the axillary lymph nodes and thus it qualifies as a 3B. In the stage 3A, the cancer has spread to the chest wall. In the cancer of the stage 3C, there may be no sign of cancer in the breast or a tumor may have spread to the chest wall or the skin of the and the cancer has spread to the lymph nodes either above or below the collarbone and the cancer may have spread to the axillary lymph nodes or to the lymph nodes near the breast bone. When in the 3C, what is there? There is no sign of the cancer in the breast. That is, there are no signs of the cancer seen within the breast. But the it has spread to the chest wall, skin of the breast and may have spread to the lymph nodes or above or the below the collarbone. In the stage 4, the cancer has spread or metastasized to the other body parts. In the stage 4, that is the last stage, now the cancer is spread to other parts of the body. Now the TNM classification. The breast cancer TNM staging system is the most common way that the doctor stage breast cancer. TNM stands for tumor, node and the metastasis. The TNM classification is basically done to identify the size of the tumor, is there any involvement of the lymph nodes or metastasis is present or not. So in the stage 1, the tumor size is less than 5 cm that is noted as T1 or T2 and there is no involvement of the nodes and no metastasis hence M0. So in the stage 1, if there is a tumor size less than 5 cm, it is called as T1 or T2 and if there is no node involvement that is N0 and if no metastasis occur, it is called as M0. In the stage 2 classification, the less than 5 cm, again the name T1 or T2. Movable axillary lymph nodes, if there is involvement of the lymph nodes, it is called as N1. If there is no metastasis, it is M0. Hence, in the stage 2, it is classified as T1 or T2 based on the size that is less than 5 cm. Involvement of the lymph nodes, that is N1 and no metastasis, that is M0. 3. Up to 10 cm, that is T3. When the breast cancer has an involvement of up to 10 centimeters, it is called as T3. The lymph nodes are movable or fixed, it is N1 or N2 and if the metastasis is there or not there, it if not there, then it is M0. The stage 4, it can be any size. The tumor can be of any size. 
involvement of any lymph nodes are present and metastasis is present hence m1 now the pathophysiology for the breast cancer predisposing factors etiological factors that is the risk factors that the person is exposed to whether it is a modifiable or a non modifiable risk factors so they cause the changes in the normal cells because of the exposure to the modifiable or the non modifiable risk factors there are changes occurring within the normal cell of the patient which is causing these changes i am causing the these changes in the cells now after the changes in the normal cell is happening the cell is multiplying same as such and an abnormal and uncontrolled growth of cells is happening and thus there is an abnormal and uncontrolled growth of the cells now the clinical manifestations that can be seen in the breast cancer are according to the american cancer society a lump or thickening in or near the area breast or in the underarm area when the person or the patient who is having the complaint of the breast cancer is having the complaint of a development of a lump in the breast or under the underarm it is said to be one of the clinical manifestations for the breast cancer a change in the size or the shape of the breast when the patient complains for the change in the norm change in the size of the breast other than the normal then it can be said as a clinical manifestation for the breast cancer after the diagnostic tests are done for the same the skin of the breast areola or nipple may be scaly red or swollen when the skin of the areola nipple is red scaly and swollen it is another of the symptoms skin irritation the patient will be complaining of the skin irritation the other clinical manifestations complain of the breast pain obviously because of there is an abnormality happening within the breast the patient will be complaining of breast pain nipple pain or tenderness along with the breast pain the patient will be complaining of the tenderness of the nipple or the pain in the nipple a nipple turned inward into the breast when there is a nipple turned inward into the breast it is called as a one of the various classification various manifestations and the symptoms for the breast cancer unilateral nipple discharge other than breast milk when there is a discharge from the nipple which is not the breast milk and there is an abnormality seen so it is one of the clinical manifestations and last axillary or the supraclavicular lymph nodes when there is an involvement of the lymph nodes it can be seen so now the diagnostic tests that need to be done to confirm that the patient is suffering from the breast cancer so now there are certain tests that are specifically saying that the patient is suffering from the breast cancer they are as complete health history is done which identifies the genetic information for the patient the physical examination in that comes is the breast self examination and the clinical self clinical breast examination now based on that it is said if there is an abnormality seen in the breast the mammogram the mammogram is basically an x-ray of the breast that are taken ultrasound that is done for the breast magnetic resonance imaging biopsy and bone scan are taken to check the chest for the cancer cells and bone scan is done to see whether is there an involvement of metastasis or not and the ct scans are done to provide a better images for the presence of the abnormal cell now the medical management the local therapy surgery and radiation therapy are the local treatments they remove or destroy cancer in the breast when breast cancer has spread to other parts of the body local therapy may be used to control the disease in those specific areas now when there is a surgery and the radiation therapy when there is a cancer cells present the therapies are decided so surgery and the radiation therapy are the local treatments when the breast cancer has spread to the other parts of the body local therapy may be used to control the disease in those specific areas this is specified only when the breast cancer is spread to any specific local areas now the systemic therapy focuses on the chemotherapy hormone therapy biological therapy and the systemic treatments they enter the blood stream and destroy the control cancer throughout the body systemic treatments are also used to cancer for cancer that has spread when there is a use of drugs when the use of the hormones where the use of the biological agents to treat the cancer's growth it is used in the systemic therapy now before starting any of the treatments an informed consent for the patient has to be taken the chances for the effectiveness of the treatment has to be explained for the patient surgery surgery is the most common treatment for breast cancer there are several types of surgery mastectomy this procedure is generally done for the carcinoma in situ Mastectomy is done when the carcinoma is in situ. It is can be either total mastectomy, radical mastectomy and the modified radical. In the total mastectomy the entire breast is being removed. In the radical mastectomy that is the breast is being removed along with and in the modified radical mastectomy along with the lymph nodes are also being removed. 
Now, based on the size and the location of the breast cancer, the surgery is being decided for the patient. Lymph node dissection. When there is an involvement of the lymph nodes along with the breast cancer, the lymph node dissection is being done. Up to 10 to 40 of the lymph nodes are being removed. Breast sparing surgery. In the breast sparing surgery, the abnormal tissue is removed and along with that some healthy tissue surrounding the tumor cells are being removed and they are trying to spare the breast. Cryotherapy is the use of the freezing probe over the cancer cells to destroy them. Breast reconstructive surgery is being done for the patient to reconstruct the breast. Now the other therapies are the radiation therapy that is it. external rays have been given to the area. It can be internal radiation in the form of an implant or the external radiation. Now in the internal implants, the seeds are being placed into the cancer tree areas and then the radiation is being given. In the external, the patient is ex given the rays from the outside. The chemotherapy is the administering of the drugs. The hormone therapy is the use of the hormones. And the biological therapy, it helps the immune system to fight cancer. In the biological therapy, mainly you are trying to boost the immune system to fight the cancer. Now the nursing management focuses on the various assessment. When the patient comes with a complaint of the breast cancer and the diagnosis has been made, confirmation has been done, the nursing role has been played is as follows. That is the assessment. A complete history should be taken. Data should be obtained from the client. Assess the past medical history for the previous and surgery and a family history of breast cancer. When the nursing management is to be done, the assessment is done. A complete health history is taken for the patient. A complete health history is taken along with that the previous medical and the surgical history of the family members and the patient is being taken. Providing education and preparation about surgical treatments. Now when the patient has to be undergoing surgery or any of the treatments, they need to be educated and it is the responsibility of the nurse to clear any of the misconceptions for the patient. Prepare the patient for what to expect before, after and during the surgery. Any of the things that the patient needs to be expecting before, after and during the surgery has to be explained. Inform patient about decreased arm and shoulder mobility after surgery. Now when the surgery is being done after the, for the breast cancer, whether if it's a lumpectomy that is a removing of a part a lump or a mastectomy that is removal of the breast, it can be said that patients are informed to decrease the arm and the shoulder mobility. Administer IV fluids as indicated. After the surgery, the IV fluids that are to be administered are to be administered based on the uh, prescription for the patient. Discuss the procedure to alleviate fear. Patient will be in a great deal of fear because of the procedure. So explaining of the procedure provides comfort and reduces fear for the patient. Reducing fear, anxiety and improving coping ability. Now patient's goal, uh, another goal for reducing anxiety and fear and improving the coping ability goes as open communication and assuring the patient and involving patient in planning in the treatment. When there is an open communication about the misconceptions, the exact treatment that is to be given, it helps in reducing the anxiety and the fear. Suggest to the patient psychological interventions may be necessary for anxiety and depression. Now this is a great deal of surgery that the patient is going to be undergoing and the treatments. After the surgery, the patient can be having the questions regarding the self-image. So patient may need to deal with the counsellor and they need to be explained for the same. Provide psychological support to the patient throughout the diagnostic and the treatment process. Now, the patient will be very vulnerable and weak, so psychological support needs to be provided to the patient. Promoting decision making ability. Give patient treatment option and make a choice. Now, there are patients needs to be involved within the treatment. So, they are given, be given the choice of the treatment options that whether do you want to go for the surgery or not. The possible benefits and the risk are also explained to the patient. Prepare the patient for the effects of chemotherapy. Same goes for the chemotherapy and the radiation therapy. It is completely explained to the patient and after that it is said whether they want to be involved or not. Patient may be presented with the option of having breast conservation treatment followed by radiation and mastectomy. Now the patient may opt for the breast conservation treatment. Now the prevention focuses upon keep the weight in check, be physically active. Now the patient is advised to keep the weight in check and be physically active. The patient is advised to do more physical activity. Eat your fruits, vegetables and avoid too much alcohol. The patient is advised to eat too much fruits and vegetables and avoidance of all the alcohol. Don't smoke. Smoking cessation is advised. Breastfeed child if possible. Breastfeeding for the children, especially the mothers who are having a history of the breast cancers in the family. If the breastfeeding is option is available for their children after their 
birth of the child it is recommended for the mother avoid birth control pills particularly after 35 or if you smoke after the age of the 35 they are advised if they are having a history genetic history and the family history and if they are having alcohol intake and the smoking habit they are advised to stop all of the same avoid post menopausal hormones after the post menopause now intake of the hormones is advised not to be done tamoxifen and roxifen for women at high risk these are the tablets that are given for the patient that is tamoxifen and roxifen for the women who are at a higher risk for developing the breast cancer and find out the family history because of the finding from the family history it can be said that if the person is at a higher risk or not